Our next speaker or presenter is Harold Smith, Professor of Biochemistry and Biophysics, University of Rochester Medical Center. I do want to thank the Senators for organizing this and putting the whole show together and the Assemblymen for attending. I thank the members of the university community and the ladies and gentlemen of our community in Rochester for attending this. My name is Harold Smith. I've been in Rochester for 28 years and live in Henrietta. I came up through the ranks of the University of Rochester to full professorship in biochemistry. I started a company in 2003. My experiences that I relate to you start from that point. And I think that my major message to bring to you is that in order for this community to really realize the potential in jobs growth and economic engine that biotech can bring about, it has to be a collaborative effort. It has to be a collaboration between the universities, the companies, and venture capital groups to come together and pull the rope in the same direction. This is so critical now because there has been a major change on the horizon that has affected the way all of us have to do business. First, the federal government has more or less pulled the rug out from underneath us. Universities are suffering to support their research groups and their students, and businesses, biotechs, are suffering as well. The other issue is that a very major change has happened over the past 10 to 15 years is that big pharma that normally trolled the waters of the biotech and the IP estate of universities for good ideas is now adverse to building their own pipeline. They will not take things early. For a guy like myself looking for the next cure for a disease, and particularly the cure for HIV AIDS, they are asking us to go all the way through phase two clinical trials now. Fifteen years ago, I would have been popped out of the university technology and rewarded with handsome amounts of money and lab infrastructure and stuff like that. Now I carry the burden. The issue here is that that is called among all of us in biotechs is the valley of death. It is so popular now that it has its own name. And that is where university discovery, which is an element that turns over rocks in the right place and tells you how the natural world exists, has to be complemented by biotech that creates new products through innovation and, and invention. These things don't exist in nature until man and woman creates them. Now between that rift if biotech, if biotech has to carry the weight all the way through clinical trials, this is going to be all of us in New York who are requiring a sustained risk in biotech and requiring support that will not necessarily come from venture capital because they are risk adverse. It will not come from the federal government because now my funding and my study section for HIV is at 4.5%. When I started out as an assistant professor, it was at 20 so I have to compete at that level. It's not that the science has gotten dumber. It's that we are, as a nation, choosing not to invest in technology. We're making a decision about the future of healthcare. So if you look at uh, a census that I conducted recently by Dunn and Bradstreet, there are approximately 14,000 what you could call biotechs across the state. When I say biotech, most people confuse this with high tech. Biotech is a part of high tech, but in biotech, you take cells or molecules in cells and manipulate them and target them with drugs in order to create therapeutics. It's different than a medical device. It's different than putting a wind vane or a solar panel. It, all of those are high tech, but biotech has its unique problems in that the incubation period to product is longer because there's so much vetting that has to take place. Technology that comes out of the university is not vetted for product development. It has to be vetted in the course of biotechs. It has to be shown to be reproducible. And that is not everything that's true necessarily is a product. So this is in the hands of the biotech. And I think what has to happen is that the state has to help us with some kind of oversight to make sure that the husbandry is there. Because as the universities are trying to launch companies, they're finding themselves in a very unique position now. And I can tell you I'm right square in the middle of this. Is that because I don't have a pharma partner until later on, I have to have fiduciary responsibility 
to my company for a longer period of time to navigate all the turns and traverses that will happen in my company to make sure it stays on track and that someone who knows the technology is behind it all the way. I am 100% committed. But because of my situation as being a university faculty member, I have to be careful and navigate my conflict of interest. I have to release my fiduciary responsibilities at a time where nowadays companies are not mature enough to launch because it'll take so much longer to get into clinical trials. So what I'm asking for is not regulation, but perhaps allowing people like myself and the university president to adopt new language and perhaps legislation. What I'm looking for is a biotech industry revitalization and development initiative. I call this acronym BIRDIE. It's because it's one better. It's one better than just simply throwing university technology out in the field, allowing VCs to be the sole gatekeeper who triage it. Because I can tell you, over a cure for HIV, which is nebulous, treacherous, and risky, they'll choose to develop yogurt, which was the Greek yogurt happened several thousand years before the birth of Christ, okay? So that's the level of innovation you'll see in the VC community. What would help tremendously is if the state adopt this so that there was appropriate guidance, mentoring, counseling, and yes, financial support in the way of grants that are milestone driven. I'm asking for a significant amount of dollars to be vested, not in high tech specifically, though that's a separate discussion from your other meetings, but specifically in biotech itself to nurture that industry and protect fledgling companies and people who need to continue to develop their work during this period of time where federal government is not supporting biotech and where industry, big industry, is not coming to the rescue early. So I, th I think with that, I'll summarize to say that largely I am grateful for the opportunity to actually speak at such a thing. It's rare that a faculty member actually gets to come out like this. I think that it's cooperation between academics small companies, and venture capital. Everyone has to pitch in and pull in the same direction. If we do not do that and have state money supporting it, venture capital will continue to restrict the amount of their total budgets of available investment to 5 to 10% of their funds, and those are the ones who are interested. And we will not get the support for biotechs. It is a risky proposition. It is the number of opportunities on goal that matter in biotech because one of us makes it and it's a blockbuster. It's tens of millions, of tens of billions, hundreds of millions. These things come out of the door in ways you can't believe. Yes, four or five will die for everyone that makes it. And it's not always because it's a bad idea. It's largely because of the economic climate and the ability to find a strategic partner. New York State can make sure that more of us are coming out into companies and more of us have an opportunity to thrive, I can guarantee that if biotech becomes a substantial rail across the state, whoever came up with the idea of SUNY as a system for educating our population, you merge those two concepts, the SUNY creating people who are educated and looking for high paying jobs with a biotech rail that is capable of providing that, You've got a New York state that is going to be as competitive as California, Florida, Texas, and Massachusetts. So I thank everyone for allowing me to do this, have this opportunity to speak, and I'll take any questions. You're smarter than all of us. <laughs> uh, but, it, but it's interesting. Uh, what we have heard in most places is, is uh, get government out of our way. But you're articulating a need for state government to, to be involved in, in this In the area. form of grants. And, and so the hardest thing is government relations and investor relations. But you Back. mentioned New York State oversight. Mm -hmm. what, right. what do you mean by the oversight? In the so way of grants or? In the more? way of a, a grant. So we were a beneficiary of the Blueprint Award, the Empire State Blueprint Award, which helped us out at a critical time. Uh, we then picked up a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. These were in the, in the ilk of uh, 100 to 200,000. Uh, a grant that would help start a, a biotech 
move from the university where it's protected and seminars are taking place and you're really not out there, you're not totally committed as long as you're a university professor to create a product. You do great discoveries, you publish papers, but you cannot actually create a product. What we need is New York State to actually say, we will incentivize the university and faculty, understanding that there's now a protracted period of time of husbandry that's necessary in order to get products to market. And that will require a committee at the state level that understands what the denominator is, how many companies we have, and what is the diversity of technology, and what is the potential earnings if all of them were maxed to a maximum intake. California has commissions. Massachusetts, Texas, Pennsylvania, all the states that have successful biotechs have a group of senators and assemblymen who are dedicated to understanding what are the needs of that community. We have nothing like that. You mentioned in your written testimony also throughout the idea of low interest loans. Yes. Is that workable? Yes, that will be workable. For example, the blueprint award is a loan, and if we meet all our milestones in employment, then it's given to us as a grant. So there is a lot of carrot, but there is a stick as well on that. And I think that that works pretty well for us. Outright gift of money, of course, is always appreciated. But I think we have to look at this as something that the state has to try to understand what we have in order to know where we're going. And that's what this commission, whether it's dissolved afterwards or whatever, we have to come together as a state and understand what it is that we can build. Rather than having random things happen here or there, one sector decides it's stem cells and another sector decides it's cancer, how do we know that that's coordinated well? Everyone's competing on their own. There's no unified method. And the venture capital community largely is going to triage things based on return for their investors. They will go for yogurt before they go for cure for AIDS. And that's a problem for us. If that's all we have is access and the federal government has abandoned us, this is going to be a massive struggle. Companies are going to die off left and right because they get just to the point and then they can't make payroll. So the state could be enormously helpful as a companion in this. Thank you. I don't want to digress too much, because this is all really about, for me anyways, is how we can make more jobs in New York, and that's good. And so it's sort of changed because what we sort of heard before was that the privates, which I always thought was interesting because California, despite what you read, and Massachusetts really were comparable in cost. I would almost make the argument in upstate New York, it's cheaper to do business than it is in Massachusetts or most parts of California with more reliable energy in other places, maybe not Carolina, maybe not Texas. But you think it's really much, much more than that, I'm hearing you say, on even the investment side, which is shocking to me because so there's all this money in the pharmaceutical industry, and that's the part we always seem to miss, at least in Rochester. So they've even created some vaccines or HP, but the vaccine's never made here. That technology goes somewhere else to be manufactured. They're investing somewhere. Maybe it has to be some kind of, maybe if we get more of a reputation, they'd be more willing private and public money to go into it. I don't know. Do you have a comment on that? We have to try to build it in New York. There was a point in time where downstate had an enormous production facility. It became too expensive to do it down there. The Alexander Research Center is put together. It is the Taj Mahal. Most people would give an arm in order to work there, right? It is the Alexander Research Center, and it's set up with elite faculty working inside of it with pharma fishing the edges for a good idea. What's missing there, in my personal opinion, is a lack of deliberateness. If you have academics doing science, they pursue it in an unfettered, unharnessed way to go for discovery. That is the nature of it. Anything short of that is not academic research and discovery. 
And so if you have a group of people who are not product-oriented, getting a lot of resources and a lot of money, what you're going to get is a randomized discovery process, which someone else above is pulling out and then taking out of state with you. Right. Right? So what I'm asking for is a highly focused effort by the state to understand what it is that we can create, what it is that we can do, how to potentiate it within New York, grow it in New York, and make it in New York. We have the people across an entire CUNY, SUNY system in private universities. My company is staffed solely by New York State graduates. And they are considered among the elite in this area. We are considered now a global leader towards a cure. How did that happen in upstate New York? Smart people working in a dedicated way. I would love to be able to work with the uh, Senate and the Assembly to come up with appropriate language and appropriate ideas just from the insider's point of view to try to give that perspective as a sounding board. So I, I really am grateful for the opportunity here. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Smith, well, one more question. I just, sure. um, we talked in my office many months ago. I know you came with, the, with your ideas. But I just wanted you to mention you were talking about California mm -hmm. and how much, what was the figure that they're putting into their biotech industry? Didn't they vote on a, on a referendum to fund that out in California? Uh, I don't actually have the number on top of my head. Sorry, we're but talking it was, billions, it, right? Yeah, yeah it was uh, approaching billion. And um, the, the point there is very good as well, because if you look at what we have, if you have a biotech community and one biotech is needing to hire, there's usually people in the immediate vicinity who are well-trained to move in. And so what you end up creating is this critical mass. It's like what Dr. Seligman, uh, President Seligman was saying. You need to create an intelligence critical mass. And we are scattered in New York. Those 1,400 technologies are all over the place. Um, that's the advantage of having a commission that basically says, you know what, what's happening in Syracuse is Dr. So-and-so has a related company, and that you might be benefit from having a JV, a joint venture, and the state could actually facilitate interactions in a way that's unparalleled by having a five-mile view of what's going on on the ground. It has to come with a lot of money uh, going into it, and as you'll see in my recommendation, uh, I'm recommending $200 million a year dedicated to biotech each of five years, so $1 billion total going in. Uh, there is a House resolution that will be dropped soon. You have a copy of that. Uh, Voyagen's research and products are specifically earmarked in that House resolution. It's for $3.2 billion, and so that money is dedicated to take us through phase three of clinical trials. That, with state as a matching fund, imagine how we could finance out biotech. It could really reach that glorious moment for all of us. So, uh, again, thank you. Thank you. Joanne.